Hello everyone, Tasha here with Butterfield Alpaca Ranch. Thank you for joining me today and I have a special guest, Emini. Um, as you know, we've been doing the series on how to process alpaca fiber, taking it from the shearing the animal to yarn. And today we're discussing our final step. Uh, so far we did tumbling, washing, picking, and carding. So now we're on to spinning and that's the final step before it actually is yarn. And Emily is joining us here today. She has her own uh, fiber studio of sorts and sewing, right? Your business is Hopkins Studio, right? Yes. And she yes, is just a, a fiber artist galore. She knows how to do everything. So she's going to um, share with us about spinning because I personally don't spin. So welcome, Emily. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I started spinning... Mm, I want to say around 2013, one of those things where you fall down the rabbit hole. So you end up um, making your own yarn, and then I took it a step further this year, end of 2016, and start processing my own fiber as well. So when my good friend Tasha, of course, decided, oh, she's going to be an alpaca rancher, well, yeah. <laughs> so that's how this whole thing came about. I did want to try some new fiber because again, processing raw fiber was new to me and raw meaning straight from um, the animal, straight from the sheep, straight from the alpaca, llama, camel in the raw form, washing it, cleaning it, prepping it um, by many methods of fiber prep and then spinning it. And then if you want, knitting it to a finished garment or weaving with it. So that's where we are today. Wonderful. So can you tell us what is spinning? Spinning is the process of taking um, fibers, because they could be plant fiber, they could be animal fiber, and spinning them by adding twist into the fiber to make it into a strong cord. Basically, we know it as yarn. You can spin in several ways. You can spin with a drop spindle. You can spin on a spinning wheel. Um, and I would probably say before spinning wheels, the drop spindle was the first way of spinning. And then wheels came out with a quill, which kind of looks like when we think of Rumpelstiltskin with a little point on there, prick the finger, that type. And then now we have just wheels, all different sorts, modular wheels, portable wheels. But it's the process of turning that raw fiber into yarn. So why would we want to do things like picking and carding before we spin? You want to prepare your fiber. It's sort of like if you think of your clothes, you want to wash them and iron them before you wear them. It's the same thing with your fiber. So when you are picking your fiber, sometimes there are parts of the animal that you don't want to spin. So areas near what they call the bridge, near like the back rear end or areas where they do a lot of friction, a lot of rubbing uh, right under the chin where they eat a lot right under here. Um, you would want to remove those. So you want to pick uh, pick through those, pick some of the kind of the nasties out, uh, poop tags, little things like that. Um, uh, in the process of the term actual picking, you can, after you've cleaned your fiber, take your hands and you're going to fluff and pull that fiber apart, fluffing it up, prepping it for uh, spinning. So um, also, if you look at the cost of fiber prep tools, those tools can be very expensive. So you do want to move big debris move hay or anything that could harm the tines in your drum carter mm -hmm. or the tines on your um on your hand combs or anything like that and some people even use dog combs but you still want to preserve your tools no matter the cost and some of them can be really really expensive yep wonderful well the video before this one was the uh, picking and carting so i showed my diy home version picker <laughs> Um, and then the drum carter, which I think you and I have very similar. So the drum carter would be used to create uh, woolen yarn. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So when you are drum carting fibers, you are actually trying to miss mash the fibers. You want them to kind of go in different way. And I'll show you an example. If you look at Tasha and I, if you look at my hair, if I get really close, it's kind of all over, kind of in the afro, the fibers are just kind of doing their thing. If you look at Tasha's, they're aligned, they're completely straight. And so the process of running your fibers through a drum carter is just that it will put those fibers kind of in a mishmash way, not aligned. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. I compared it to brushing your hair out, getting the tangles out of your yeah. hair. So yeah. they're not all going to lay the same direction, but all the tangles are out so that when you go to spin, everything is able to flow smoothly. Correct. And you can use massive amounts in a drum carter, which is a lot faster than hand cards or processing by, um, by cones. And you can make bats and different things, but it gives you more texture. So you end up with what's called a woolen prep. And so basically it's more air inside mm -hmm. of that fiber. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the other prep that you can do, which I did not show, uh, was the worsted prep, which you use combs. Is that yes. right? Yes, hand combs. You can find combs anywhere from a two pitch, which are basically two rows kind of offset, all the mm -hmm. way up to English combs, which are about, they can go up to four to five rows. I mean, they're really these Wolverine looking combs, but what they do is just like when you comb your hair, they are aligning those fibers and combs. The purpose of the comb is to align those fibers to where they're all parallel versus the drum carter that kind of mixes the fibers all up. And so with, again, everything being really smooth, you take the air out when spinning versus having the air in and you get a woolen spun yarn from a drum carter. So why would you choose one prep method or the, over the other? How does that affect your end result, your yarn? Exactly. It depends on what your purpose is. So if you're doing woolen, meaning if you're going to do uh, the drum carter prep, that preparation is not as strong. It does not yield a strong... Um, is it because of the of air? Heart. Yes, it's because of the air. However, it's a lot warmer. Hmm. It's a lot warmer. It's a lot lighter physically because of the air and a lot loftier. Also, the drum carter, when you're doing your prep, it's faster. It is much faster than going <laughs> through an entire fleece with combs. So yes. you can run into the drum carter and go right to your wheel. Now, mm -hmm. it also lends to a fuzzy yarn, a yarn with a halo. So it gives a little, a little fuzz to it. So it's not slick and smooth. Now, on a um, worsted prep using the comb, you remove all of the air out. So you get better stitch definition. It's not fuzzy, really smooth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Slick. Now, it is not as warm, but if you want to do cables and, and color work and some things that have true definition, then mm -hmm. your comb prep. And some people don't like the halo. They don't want it fuzzy. They want it really smooth and almost commercial looking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then you can use your palms but the prep time is a lot i think they safety they both can be as dangerous yes but the prep time yes the prep time is a lot longer um when combing and it takes yeah. a little more tools once you comb you can pull the fiber into a ball off of your comb you, you may have to take it from a comb to a hackle so it, it can also include more tools than what you would use for a drum carter once you pull it off the hackle which is a long if you think of a ruler with tines going straight across once you pull that off you have to get another device called a diz and you pull it through that diz so you've been working with some alpaca fiber mm -hmm. there's was there three different ones that yes. I sent you? Um, yes. And so you have two wakayas of two different yes. grades and then a surrey. Um, yes. So how has working with alpaca been different than other fibers that you've tried? Well, from the raw stage, alpaca doesn't have oil. Doesn't have lanolin. No lanolin. So right mm -hmm. off the bat. Yeah, right off the bat. There is no need to scour. And so when you're mm -hmm. scouring a fleece, you're basically trying to get that water hot enough to dissolve lanolin. Lanolin is oil, so we all know oil and water doesn't mix. So you're trying to get all that off. With alpaca, you don't have to. They're just dirty. It's just dirt. So you nice. can't spin right in the dust because that's exactly what's on there. I mean, you may find mm -hmm. little bits, little bits of hay, but your hands aren't uh, greasy at all. They aren't shiny mm -hmm. at all. And it's really interesting because it feels like hair mm -hmm. it doesn't mm -hmm. feel like it actually feels like hair so you have a different um a different texture you also don't have scales 
so you don't really have that clinging to each other especially when you look at the siri it doesn't uh yeah it's literally like doll hair like if you've got a like a little barbie doll yes and you start pulling yeah. the hair well and some like, people use that for doll hair specifically yes. because of the qualities of it it's very much like that yeah. mm -hmm. it's slick it's long it's wavy mm -hmm. um so very different than uh your types of wools because on your uh, when you're dealing with sheep and long wool and serious i mean it's four or five inches they're very coarse long wools are very coarse in sheep this is not very coarse at all it's mm -hmm. super silky soft but yet mm -hmm. it's long mm -hmm. so they do have their characteristics with the um wakaya it's more sheep like than the <laughs> silly, but still, yeah. mm -hmm. you know because it's it's not as slick it's right. not as slick Mm -hmm. um, but still very, very, very soft. And you have to force the fibers to come together in your spinning to be really intentional. It's not woolly. They're not going to grab onto each other and want to be friends. You want to, mm -hmm. you're going to kind of corral them together as you're trying to spin those. So they can give you, they can give you a challenge if you're a beginning, uh, beginning spinner. And they also work really well mixed with other fibers, mm -hmm. a lot of times you'll True. see wool and alpaca blends instead mm -hmm. of uh, the fibers 100% by themselves. Yeah, so for the beginner spinner, uh, wool is where you start, right? And um, yes. you don't want to learn with alpaca. <laughs> no, and sometimes if you're fortunate enough, sometimes you don't know, and that's what you learn on. Uh, mm -hmm. But it has very different characteristics, and I would encourage mm -hmm. you, if you've not tried alpaca, to try it. Try it blended and mm -hmm. try it single and make your samples. Um, I'll show some photos of how I did the sampling to make some samples and really see how you want to use this fiber. It's not cheap fiber. It's right. a part of a local fiber. So you want to mm -hmm. make sure that you know what you're making with it, and then you process it in the correct way to get what you want. Right. So that goes back to if you're going to create something with cables or definition in your stitches, then you're going to go for the, the worsted prep on your... Yes. But if you're just going to do some simple stitches like a stockinette, then use your drum carter and save yourself some time. <laughs> go with the woolen method, right? Yeah. yeah. And you can even do a semi-woolen. So you could... Um, like Tasha has a drum carter, so you could prep everything to the drum carter and spin it worsted style. You don't have to spin it woolen because there are uh, woolen and worsted are a method of prep and they're also a method of spinning. So you very well could run everything through the drum carter and still spin it worsted, still taking out as much air as you possibly can. Now it will give you a fuzzy yarn still, very, very nice, very dense. Or you could comb it, spin it worsted, or drum cart it and then still spin it woolen by doing long draw and still keep all of that air in. So you have the same options as you would in wool. You have the same options in alpaca. So when you are um, spinning woolen or spinning worsted, does that depend on how much air you leave in? I guess totally. <laughs> totally. Yeah, using the right terminology. Does. But yes, in your yes. with your drafting, right? When you're drafting and you're letting out the fibers and your control over that of how much mm -hmm. air you allow to stay. Yes. Within the draft, we, as. Yes. So for woolen, you're allowing a lot of air in the, in the, in the draft. So if you think of, or if anybody has this in their stash, um, uh, Brooklyn Tweed by Jared Flood is a woolen spun yarn. I mean, it is like air in your hand and your <laughs> alpaca will come the same way. You will be shocked if you weigh your bobbin, how much is actually on there because it is so full of air. So when you are spinning woolen, you are doing long draw. I mean, you are extending that out. So you're not spinning it and it's not getting as much twist as it can. It's getting air and twist, air and twist, air and twist. And so you end up with a really lofty, um, almost like a bouncy, a bouncy yarn. Mm -hmm. And that's your, that's a woolen prep on a drum carter and a woolen spin once you actually get to your wheel or, or spinning. If you are doing a worsted uh, prep, you would comb it. And then when you put your twist in, you would normally do a short forward draw, a short backwards draw, or from the fold. Mm -hmm. All of those will give you a worsted prep which means you're taking out all of the air, primarily getting to where almost commercial, commercial looking fiber.
Mm -hmm. Okay, and we should clarify that the worsted weight of yarn that is classified on a yarn label is not what we're talking about when we say worsted for spinning. It's the same word, different meaning. So don't, don't confuse yeah. the worsted weight with these spinning terms. <laughs> Or worsted spinning versus worsted prep. There are um, different, uh, the same words, but they do mean different things within the phase of your prepping your food. Yeah, I could say the same thing with shearing. We used first, second, and thirds, and depending on the shearing or the sorting, those terms mean different yes. things. <laughs> or yarn over yeah. means something different in knitting and crochet. So don't don't let the terms yeah. confuse you. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. I can't think of any other questions. Um, right. Is there anything else you want to tell us? Um, I say do give it a try. You know, even if you are a new spinner, if you catch some alpaca, hang on to it. Hang on to it. Um, if you want to try commercial and just feel the property differences between wool and uh, alpaca or get an alpaca blend. I encourage you to try that. You know, spinning is the, it's the process of going from sheep to sweater or sheep to cowl or sheep to whatever your garment. The same thing with um, alpaca. Take that fleece and go from processing it raw, seeing how different it is, seeing how different the prep is from a wool fiber. And the warmth, alpaca is really dense once it's knit up. I mean, it's extremely warm. Um, mm -hmm. I encourage you to try it. Try your samples. Um, and then try, again, just like Tasha said, different grades. Just like you have different grades of wool, mm -hmm. you have the same thing in alpaca. So I encourage you mm -hmm. to, uh, to try it and try the different prep methods. If you were part of a local guild, I encourage you to maybe try a drum carter. Try cones, try hand carding it, try turning it into, into row legs, just a different method so you can see the different results you can get with various, mm -hmm. uh, various fibers. And it is wonderful blended. It's wonderful blended with other, um, mm -hmm. with, uh, other types of wool. Uh, I encourage yeah. you to try it. As long as they are similar micron. You don't, yes. you don't want a large uh, difference in the micron from your different types of fiber. That, that's not going to give you a good end result. The what? Right, and also um, the length. Making yes. sure that when you blend mm -hmm. them that you have the same staple length. So mm -hmm. pull one piece mm -hmm. out, measure it, and then blend it. So in the, in the um, samples, I blended um, the Suri with Targi. Okay. And also I blended um, my lovely Sylvie, which is a beautiful color, with some uh, gray Corydale. Oh, and I, yes. So you can see, and I spun 100% and then a 50, 50 blend. And again, the mixing may help if you're a beginner, the mixing may help you to kind of grab those fibers, but everything depends on how well your fiber is prepped. Everything, mm -hmm. you know, when you're cooking, how well you prep depends on the end result of your dish. It's the mm -hmm. same thing in your fiber prep. I did think of one last question that's in regard to washing because people choose to wash um, either at the beginning with when the fiber is in the raw state before you do any kind of prepping yeah. and some this is a regard to alpaca anyway and then some people choose to wait to wash it until it is yarn when they're setting the yarn so have you yeah. experimented with that I have not. I have washed all of my fiber first. I think it's just the whole idea of running something dirty through my equipment so <laughs> now again with alpaca I mean, there's really nothing in there. I mean, there's like... It's just the dirt. Know. Yeah, it's just the yeah. dirt. And when you rinse it, some people just rinse theirs. They don't want to scour it. They're just rinse it. So you can spin, we would say in wool, in the grease, you can spin in the dirt for alpaca. <laughs> or, yeah. you can, or you can clean it first. It just depends. Also, if you're going to dye your mm. alpaca, so let's say you want to dye it. You mm -hmm. know what? If you're going to wash it anyway. Go ahead and spin it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can dye it and, and clean it. Alpaca takes dye very well. Yes. Yes. So, so I've been told. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so either way, either way. And I'll submit, uh, I have a dye course coming up. So I'll uh, throw some in there. We'll have to get more. <laughs>
what I have, but I'll throw <laughs> some in there and then send you some uh, of it over dyed. But you can either spin um, dirty, shall we say, or you can spin it clean, but you don't have to scour it. You don't have to right. scald the life out of it because it's just, mm -hmm. they're just playful. They're just playing in the dirt mm -hmm. in the dust. That's all they're doing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So, Emini, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, tell us how we can see more of your work or how to get a hold of you. You can find me uh, at my Etsy shop at hopkinssewingstudio.etsy.com. Um, also, to keep up with me, primarily Instagram. I post on Instagram probably a bazillion times a day. <laughs> my handle there is Hopkins Studio. And uh, if you have any questions or if I can help in any way, just feel free uh, to let me know. Okay. Thank you so much, Emini. You're welcome. <laughs> Next week's video is actually going to be um, me picking up four new alpacas. Um, so it's going to be a road trip and I'm going to record as much of it as I can and show you um, what that is like to go pick up new alpacas and introduce them to my herd. So join me next week for that. <laughs>